Well, hello everyone. My name is Martin Hayes. I'm one of the application engineers here at Go Engineer. Today we're going to take a look at SOLIDWORKS PDM and how we can apply our data management tools to work with our CAD files and our other files to streamline that workflow and uh, the, the tools that that brings to the table. A little bit about us as a company. Go Engineer, we have uh, offices located throughout the United States. We cover a good bit of the United States as far as the regions that we sell our software in. And so our, our primary software is the, the SOLIDWORKS main core CAD package, but um, we also carry the other SOLIDWORKS products alongside that, the data management that we'll look at today. Um, SOLIDWORKS simulation, uh, CAM tools, the plastics injection molding tools, um, as well as PCB and electrical tools. Um, and then on top of that, on top of the software we carry through SOLIDWORKS, um, we also carry the leading in the industry 3D printers and 3D scanners. Um, but beyond the, the products, the software and the hardware that we sell, the way we really like to set ourselves apart is the partnership we have with our customers, the services we provide alongside with that software. Um, some of which included with your um, your yearly subscription renewals for your software and your hardware, but then beyond that, the training and the, um, the no additional fees for things like this webinar, um, the free events we're able to provide. And so all that takes shape in everything from tech support. We've got over 100 or around 100 dedicated tech support engineers, as well as um, application engineers throughout the United States to work directly with our customers, whether it be through webinars like this, through uh, in-person, or this year, of course, a lot of online training. And then beyond our training classes, we offer what we call application mentoring sessions for our engineers to work directly with our customers, with your designers and engineers, to get the most out of the tools that we have available. We do that as just part of our um, sh subscription renewal program. So. I want to make sure everybody knows about that. And uh, we actually just launched a brand new website this week. And so if you go to goengineer.com, you get to check out our new website and uh, the details for um, those, those kind of services and partnerships we provide are all there. You can find out how to um, get in touch with tech support, with an application mentoring session, or additional products uh, if you need those. So our, our kind of breakdown for today, as we, as we look at SOLIDWORKS PDM, we wanna answer these big questions. We wanna answer what is SOLIDWORKS PDM and how can you benefit from it? Which version of SOLIDWORKS PDM? It comes in a couple different versions. Um, how do we access those? What, how's the licensing handles for those? But more importantly, which version is right for you? And then we'll take a quick look at Flatter Files, a plugin that we have available to make your key documentation and files available throughout the supply chain, whether that's um, to your customers and vendors or whether that's internally interdepartmentally to the, the, the shop floor, the, the marketing department, the order management department, making those files available beyond just the SOLIDWORKS PDM system. Um, so what I wanna do is I want to jump over into the software We'll take a look at the interface and uh, the, the client side of SOLIDWORKS PDM first, kind of give you a little tour, and then we'll circle back to here and walk through each of these questions and, and, and look to answer these questions today and uh, hopefully be a good, whether it's a first look for SOLIDWORKS PDM for you or if you're already using SOLIDWORKS PDM, I uh, hope you'll be able to find a few things today that you might be able to, um, to add to your work environment and uh, benefit from that functionality. So I'm gonna open up uh, Windows Explorer and the PDM user interface primarily lies in Windows Explorer. So the, the big benefit behind that is if your users are already working with Windows, whether it's a, a shared drive or just locally on their computers, um, SOLIDWORKS is Windows only, so I assume most of your users are Windows users. Um, it's all built into that Windows Explorer interface, your open and save as dialogues, and then there are additional add-ins uh, for SOLIDWORKS and some of the other softwares. But if your users know how to work with Windows Explorer, how to navigate files there, the same structure, the same interface um, is how we access the vault in SOLIDWORKS PDM. If you look at the top of my screen, it's actually just a folder on my C drive. Now that's what my client side sees, what we call the local view. So any of the files we read or edit uh, within SOLIDWORKS PDM are copied locally onto our computer. And we'll talk about some of the benefits of that. 
But um, as far as Windows is concerned, as far as SOLIDWORKS or Microsoft Word, or even I use Notepad as an example, any software in your computer, those open and save as dialogs, your Windows Explorer interface, you'll have access into your PDM vault. And you'll see kind of the folder structure laid out very similar to Windows Explorer, a little bit of extra color and some indicators there. Um, there's a few panes down at the bottom, a preview window and some informational windows that we'll take a look at. And then a few extra little sets of controls built into that interface as well. So I'm gonna dig down over into um, just some example CAD files that I've got. And we'll look at just a, a simple part first. Let's pull up this part here as a drawing with it. So um, you'll see right off the bat, this is not just Windows Explorer. Um, we've actually using uh, an eDrawings preview window here so that you can actually see the files without having to open any external software. Uh, for you know our engineers or designers, how often does somebody come in and say, what's that dimension? Can you check, uh, you know, can you check the note on this drawing real quick? And uh, with the eDrawings viewer built in here, you don't even have to load up SOLIDWORKS or, or launch into eDrawings. Um, this will even work for non-CAD users to be able to interface with the, the CAD documentation, um, even if they don't have SOLIDWORKS installed on their machine. Um, so this just requires eDrawings kind of running in the background. Um, on the data card, this is um, where SOLIDWORKS PDM stores the metadata. So if you're used to working with SOLIDWORKS and the terminology there, um, think custom properties, but above and beyond. Um, custom properties on steroids. So um, we got everything as far as uh, document numbers, project numbers, project names, the provision, description, the type of stuff you would typically store in your SOLIDWORKS custom properties for your CAD files. Anything that's gonna appear on your bill of materials or in your title blocks on your drawings. And then really you can go beyond that. Um, you can have vendor information, um, customer information, um, this is fully customizable. Um, the, the data card, we call it uh, here, is just a, a sample a example data card with some real generic type stuff on it. But you can really, uh, the sky's the limit as far as how, how small, simple, or as, as big and complex you wanna go with SOLIDWORKS PDM. And that's not just with the data card, but really across the board. Um, I know when engineers hear the word data management, they're, they think red tape. And so this uh, system is fully customizable from, from the, the smallest company that doesn't want any red tape, they just want to manage their files well, to the larger companies that need multiple approval processes and uh, you know, want to log a lot of metadata with the files as they go through, even interface with, a, with an ERP system. Um, so the data card is available, not just for SOLIDWORKS files and, and connecting with the SOLIDWORKS custom properties, but um, also with any files, uh, even folders, can have data cards attached to them. And so when we say data card or metadata, we're thinking of the information that is attached to the files and that makes them smart files. And you can even have what we would consider kind of like smart folders in, uh, in, Sol in SOLIDWORKS PDM. So these data cards and the, uh, the variables is what we call them listed here, actually interface bi-directional communication with your SOLIDWORKS custom properties. So what we'll see is if I put a document number in my SOLIDWORKS custom properties, it'll appear here. And more importantly, if I put it here on my data card, it'll actually populate into the SOLIDWORKS documents, into those custom properties and be available for our title blocks of real materials um, for everywhere that part's concerned. And the benefit to doing this, kind of building on the benefit of using custom properties in general, we put that information in one spot and, and there's no more human interaction with it as far as having to copy down this document number into Excel sheets, into build materials, into um, the, the part drawing. Um, everywhere that that document number is used, it's just referenced altogether. And if it you know, has to change in one spot, kind of like the revision, we're not gonna forget to change the revision on the document, on the drawing, on the build materials, because it's gonna change automatically. It's all interconnected. Uh, the idea here is we can enter the information one time and have it propagate throughout the system. And again, just like that preview tab, you don't have to have SOLIDWORKS to be able to edit this. And this is something uh, interesting that SOLIDWORKS PDM brings to the table that we, we don't have a SOLIDWORKS is that with SOLIDWORKS custom properties, build materials, title blocks, you have to open SOLIDWORKS and have it loaded on your system to use that. This is something that somebody could do data entry and not have to have SOLIDWORKS loaded on their computer for. 
so great benefit there. Um, the version tab is just kind of your, your basic what, what you would expect as far as kind of behind the scenes in the PDM system. So it's showing us the version of the, um, of the file that is on the server and the version that's on my computer. So I have version two of two. The revision of the file, um, if it has a category, um, which workflow it's in. So kind of some behind the scenes there going on. But uh, big thing I want to point out here is we're tracking a version and a revision. So the version is essentially the change history of the file. Every time this file gets pushed back to the server, it creates a version that we can keep track of. So if we need to see what the file looked like yesterday or last month or in revision A, we can go back in the history and look at that file. And it's as easy as a right click history. And you can see the history of that file anytime somebody interacted with it, their notes, their comments when they did it, uh, who the user was and the uh, date and time that they made those changes to it. And then beyond that, we have the revision, which is your, your typical going to appear on your, your drawing, those approved drawings or certified drawings that, that get named revisions. Um, that's tracked as well. So SolarWorks PDM is aware of both keeping track of it changes just for your internal history, but also the way engineers have to manage the named revisions of files and uh, drawings. From uh, there, we'll go on to the Bill of Materials tab. So this drawing just has a, a single part in it, Bill of Materials. Um, but let's look at this, uh, this assembly drawing here. It will be a little more interesting. So this assembly drawing, we can see the data card for it, some information there. On the Bill of Materials, we're going to be able to see um, all the components. So the, the assembly itself and then each of the sub-assemblies and the components that are in those sub-assemblies. This build materials view is not dependent on having a table set up in your drawing or having a, a table set up in your uh, assembly. Um, it's going to automatically pull that build materials and uh, it's a live build materials if you want to think of it that way. Now we can also handle what we call named build materials where it's a, a snapshot of the build materials and then other things can be added, um, non-CAD files and such. Um, in the build materials view, we can see uh, build materials for each of the versions and there's even controls for exporting that out to Excel, um, a, a CSV file, searching the build materials or comparing. Um, now comparing would allow us to compare version C to version A, what parts were added, removed, modified. Um, so some great build materials capabilities and tools built in here. Um, big benefit in this area is even before a drawing is created, we can export a build materials out to a CSV file. So purchasing or uh, order management can start handling things and, and getting their, uh, you know, starting to take care of that parallel along with the, uh, the drawing and the detailing. Um, so we had a, a question about getting to the data card as opposed to uh, actually going to the, the model or the drawing. So the data card tab here is our access to the, uh, to the metadata that is in the, um, that, that goes with this file. And then um, if you're talking about the model and the drawing, the preview here, the preview tab is where we can have a, a viewer, just like eDrawings uh, style viewer of the file. Now, if we wanted to open the file itself, we can just double click on the file and open it like normal, open it up into SolidWorks or uh, whatever system we're working in. I hope that answers your question there um, with that. And then we've got two more tabs here in the, the interface, kind of walking through the tour. Um, the contains tab is exactly like it sounds. This drawing, all of its references, it quote unquote contains these sub assemblies and parts. And really neat thing you can do with this is we can actually um, pick out a non CAD file, make a copy of that file and paste it as a reference onto our drawing if we want that uh, that document there to be attached to this drawing, I can check out the drawing. This gives me right access to it. And then there's a, with um, a paste as reference option. And so do I want to add a reference and then optionally show in the bill of materials? We'll leave it off the bill of materials, but what this will do, once that's checked in, we'll be able to see not only does this drawing contain all the um, sub assemblies and components, but it also quote unquote contains this document. And this document could be a, a picture, it could be a, a Word document, an Office document like this, any files can be attached to others. So we kind of just made a new reference, kind of like our um, SOLIDWORKS references are maintained, 
but really going be beyond what we're doing just with CAD files. Now the contains tab is neat, it's, it's useful. We can see the different versions and, and kind of what references that file is associated with. But um, even more innovative is the where use tab. And so the where use tab, let me go to one of our, our components here. We'll go back to um, this, this cross member bar here. On the where use tab, we see the inverse of that. So where is this file contained? And uh, with a typical assembly or drawing, you can open that in SOLIDWORKS and pretty easily find references and see what it contains. But there's not really a good way to do this with just SOLIDWORKS without a data management system to be able to say, if we wanna edit, if we wanna make changes to this cross member bar, what is it going to impact? Well, that bar, we've got a drawing that references that, that file. We've got a sub assembly and a, a main assembly that reference that file. And then the master drawing also references the file. And so this is an easy way for us to go in and see everywhere that this file is used, especially if it's a common part and we wanna make a change to it to help us make those hard decisions. Like, do we need to create a, a totally new item number for this? Or can we simply modify this and update the drawings where it's used? So I can see from here that maybe I wanna check out this sub assembly. On the right click menu, whether you're in the where use, the contains tab, or in uh, your main Windows Explorer interface, your right click menu brings uh, all the PDM tools right to your fingertips. So in PDM, in order to edit a file, you need to be able to check out the file. That gives you right access and puts your name beside it. That's gonna make sure not multiple people are editing the files together. We can, uh, we saw go to the history, um, we can push the file and through the workflow and release the file and, and push it, submit it for approval. Um, those are what we consider states in SOLIDWORKS PDM. And we'll talk more about that later. But uh, I wanted to highlight just the ease of navigation on the user interface side. Browse to and browse to in a new window, exactly like you would expect. If I wanna investigate where is this seat frame, let me browse to it. And it could be in the same folder or it could be in a different location. We can jump right to those files and you see this seat frame is really not that fancy, but it's a sub assembly and somewhere we might want to go and see, okay, is this a file that is okay to be modified when I make changes to this original part? Um, so it's pretty easy to navigate and, and run through that system. Um, if I'm looking for a file named cross member, I don't actually have to do a bunch of digging. Um, think about how many minutes of your day are spent, how many hours in your month are spent digging through your file system and finding the files. I can go in and uh, do a quick search for cross member, and it's gonna be able to find all the files that have cross member in the name, but also any files that have cross member in their description from their custom properties or in their part number. And uh, we can control that. So we see, uh, you know, both of these do have cross member in the name, but um, description is one of the properties from SOLIDWORKS that is getting pulled into our data cards. And uh, you know, if there's any cross members that have a part number as their name, often people have to, um, companies have to set that up as a system to have the part numbers be the name and there's no unique, uh, there's no duplicate files that way. Um, it'll be able to search those custom properties as well. Even configuration names, something that uh, when the Windows file management systems don't really allow for. Um, so we see the drawing, um, I did a search for it. And so let's uh, jump over to that drawing from here. We'll browse to it. And uh, they're always improving the, the SOLIDWORKS PDM interface, just like if, you're, if you use SOLIDWORKS for any amount of time, every year they're adding hundreds of new features. Um, this little fast search was something they added this year, as well as uh, the last couple of years, they added the ability to right click and access all the right click menu tools from the search results and not have to jump around in the files to, to check something out to open it. Um, in the past, before we had the, the quick search, which is super helpful, um, when we still have access to the um, old complete search. In the complete search, we can search specifically by name, description, number. Um, these are cards are customizable, so we could have different fields that are searchable here. You could even have a different search, set of search fields for different departments. Um, or we can work directly off the card and, and search off of uh, the data cards there. We can search for certain variables, certain custom properties that aren't maybe in our card. Um, I really like this one to show files that are checked out by a certain person. So I, I can quickly see a list of all the files that I have marked, earmarked uh, for rewrite access, reserved for myself that I'm kind of currently working on. Or from the project manager's standpoint, 
you can kind of do an audit and look at, okay, who's working on what and, and look at the files that they have checked out. I can go in and I can see all the files that are in an approval work state that are pending and, and waiting on approval for maybe from a management standpoint. Um, so the searchability, the, the um, ease of access and interface, being able to do a lot more without having to launch SOLIDWORKS is the first thing we kind of see with SOLIDWORKS PDM. Um, let's go back over to our, um, our overview here. That's kind of a first look. We're going to open up SOLIDWORKS and, and work in there and, and look at that a little bit more as well. But let's look at our first question. What is SOLIDWORKS PDM and how can your company benefit from it? Well, you saw right off the bat, um, SOLIDWORKS PDM is what I like to describe on the tip of the iceberg. It's an augmented file explorer. It's a file management tool that's going to allow us to keep track of versions and revisions, and it's going to manage read, write permissions and capabilities. Um, then beyond that, it's going to um, do some behind the scenes local management of files and, re and uh, references for us um, to, to take that out of the Windows file structure hands. So SOLIDWORKS PDM and how you can benefit from it. I want to look at um, kind of two categories to answer this question. The things that you're having to deal with, that's the first category, the, the issues that PDM addresses, and then the things that you're dealing without, the things that you've been doing without or using workarounds for, the solutions SOLIDWORKS PDM presents. So um, first we'll look at how SOLIDWORKS PDM manages CAD file references, how it takes care of that for you, um, what, that, what SOLIDWORKS PDM brings to the multi-user um, atmosphere, the collaboration atmosphere, and then how that local cache benefits you versus working off of a Windows shared drive or working off of a cloud storage like Dropbox or, or OneDrive. Uh, then we'll uh, kind of turn the page and look at, well, how does PDM give us new capabilities that we've been doing without? You might not have any tools for revision history, um, for being able to search the files and dig through those, or um, workflow communication, maintaining what stage of a life cycle a product's in and then who can edit, who can manage the files from that end. So go back over to Windows Explorer, and I've got a project set up as an example for us here. Just a little sample gearbox from one of our, um, one of our training courses. And so on this gearbox, I wanna go in and show you how we would go in and make some changes, um, what that interface looks like, and um, we'll answer this first question, how does PDM, um, deal with the, the pain, the, the pain points that typical CAD users are used to experiencing with Windows file sharing and file structure. Um, so SOLIDWORKS is built for Windows, but Windows file structure is not aware how CAD files references work. Um, Windows is manageable, but it, but it doesn't, um, it's not aware of the, the fact that our CAD files are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars and the picture from our hiking trip last weekend is worth a thousand words because a picture is worth a thousand words. So, yeah. But um, SOLIDWORKS PDM is aware. It, it knows what a CAD file is, especially when it sees a SOLIDWORKS file. It's going to go in and rip through the references, connect all the dots. Um, all this is pre-populated as far as the contains where used and, and build materials. Um, it's going to interact with that interface with that in a way that that Windows file structure never would, never will. Um, so the first thing and the, the kind of uh, magic that happens with PDM managing your file references is we can see this drawing um, contains an assembly and several of these parts. Now the parts are named just like we have them named in our, our training class. And um, what I want to do is I want to rename these parts to make a little more sense. So I know this is, uh, and I'm kind of just looking at our descriptions here, but let's say this is 7001 gearbox housing. And we want to go through and, and straighten out things. Now, I know red flags are going off everywhere. If we have CAD admins watching, they're, I'm fired already. They may have just logged out. Um, but renaming or moving files in SOLIDWORKS PDM um, doesn't break the references. and so if we look back at our assembly, this assembly still contains that same file just with the new name. And if we go ahead and open that assembly in SOLIDWORKS, it's gonna ask me if I wanna check it out. We're not making any changes here, so 
I'm not going to check anything out at this point, but I do want to, to point out as we go in and uh, with a rebuild on the assembly, it recognizes that new file name. And if we go into the component properties, that file path includes the new name for it. And so um, kind of what's happening with this is um, with Windows file shares or Windows, even local files on your computer, SOLIDWORKS CAD file references are dependent on the file path and the file name. But with SOLIDWORKS PDM, we have an SQL database running in the background and every file has a unique identifier number. That identifier number never changes and it's not dependent on the, um, on the file name or the file path. So the file name is really just another piece of metadata for us. So what we can do is we can uh, make a new folder, let's name it components, and let's take all the components and you know, with a really large assembly, we just wanna see the top level in the main folder. Moving those components there, we can go back to the drawing and confirm. Sure, it does, uh, it does actually map to those. And if we open the drawing, um, and let's do go ahead, we'll check the drawing out. And just so we can make changes, I'm gonna check everything out here. So that's the, the SOLIDWORKS PDM add-in at work, reminding us that, hey, we might wanna check out the files if we wanna edit them. We see that part number is related to the file names for our bill of materials. And uh, so that's already repopulated. Now we could definitely go through and rename the rest of them. Um, not gonna worry about messing with that too much at this point. But um, the point being, whether we uh, rename the files or move them in our file structure, we go to that gearbox housing and look at the properties for it now. And it actually recognizes, sure, it's in that components folder. SOLIDWORKS knows exactly where to find it. Um, so that's all based on the fact that we're using the power of Microsoft SQL Server in the background, um, managing those file references based on their unique identifiers. So that's the first thing, the first pain point that SOLIDWORKS PDM addresses is you never, uh, well, never say never, but uh, you don't have to deal with the, these components are missing, and I know you've all seen it. Do you want to suppress them? Do you want to browse for them? Oh, and you have 10 seconds to decide. Hurry quick. Um, so we know that's a pain point for CAD users when they're using Windows file structure and uh, or, or working without SOLIDWORKS PDM. And so that's one of the things that just right off the bat, having your files in the PDM vault takes care of the references for you. And those file names and um, file structure are a lot more malleable once the files are in the vault and those managers are, those references are managed for you. Um, the next thing to look at is uh, kind of from the multi-user environment aspect, um, how does PDM improve when people are working together? So if I go back to Windows Explorer, we'll see that these files that I just opened, the assembly and the drawing and each of the components, I did go ahead and check all of those out. So PDM uses a checkout check-in system so that only one person can be editing any given file at any given time. So not only are these files marked by me, but um, they're editable when I've got them open in SOLIDWORKS. And if I go to our SOLIDWORKS PDM add-in appears on the task pane here, you'll actually see it shows I've got these files checked out. Now, if somebody else had um, some of the components checked out and were editing them, I'd be able to see their name here. Um, that kind of tells me a few different things. It tells me that these files might be changing. Um, and PDM will actually flag me if I have an older version than what's available on the server. And I can right click and get latest to make sure I have the latest version that's on the server. Um, so that it'll do some kind of red, throw some red flags there for out of date files. Um, but also it tells me that I can't edit those files. And um, with, without PDM, you're really just up to whoever has the files open. And I think Windows kind of helps with that a, a little bit with whoever opened the file first, you know, has dibs on it. Um, but what we end up seeing with, if people are working on copies on their local drive or if people are working off of a shared drive is um, you, especially uh, as well with, with Dropbox or OneDrive, you end up with those weird conflicting copies that, yeah, I've been working on this assembly and I changed a couple parts and somebody else has been working on the assembly and changed a couple other parts. Um, somebody's losing their work because we have conflicted copies now. Um, with SOLIDWORKS PDM, maybe I'm working on one component, you're working on another component. We both have the assembly open in read-only mode. We, we can both have the drawing open. Um, we'd each have our own parts, our own components checked out, whether that's part files or sub-assemblies 
or really the top level assembly itself if we're making top level changes. Um, that Those checkouts are done granularly so that I can be working one area, somebody else can be working on another. And then once I check in those files, they'll get flagged to update their, their assembly and they'll be able to see those changes that I've pushed back to the server when I check those in. So checking out and checking in is kind of that system that, that SolidWorks PDM uses. Um, it, it's integrated into the permissions of SolidWorks PDM. So you're, you have to have permissions to check out the files based on the folder that they're in, but also based on what we call the workflow state that they're in. So if a file has been approved by a customer, we want that file locked down. Nobody can check it out if it's in the release state. Um, now that's up to you to set it up the way you want to in your system. Maybe you do have admin levels that are able to, to check out files that are in the, the pending state for approval just to kind of do a couple last minute changes on them. It's really up to you to configure it how you want it. Again, at the workflow level, at the data card level, at the searching level, PDM as, a, as customizable or as simple as you want it to be. Um, so let's go in and we've checked out the files. So let's put our name on them. Let's look at what if we wanted to make a change um, to one of these files. And so what I see here is our uh, little circular cover here. One of our interns got carried away and uh, through through a lot of these connectors on it. We really just need one connector. Um, we'll just make sure it gets bolted in the right position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suppress that circular pattern and that leaves us just with the one connector. From here, I'm gonna save this file just like normal. And what SolidWorks PDM is doing is it's tracking, okay, the, um, the version of the file that you have on your computer, this little green icon, the local file is newer. Um, and we see that there. So um, when I look at the version number, version seven is on the server, but I'm working on something that, that is modified, that's newer than version seven technically a version that doesn't exist on the server yet. And so I get these icons that say the local file is newer. Um, this file has been edited but not saved, the assembly, and then the drawing. And let's go ahead, since we made a change, we see that change is propagated to our drawing. And why don't we go ahead and um, let's add in another little view to our drawing here as well. Um, just so people can see what we're working with, a little front view of our assembly. And let's make that uh, shaded though, good. All right, I'm gonna save my drawing and it's gonna go ahead and rebuild each of the pages. Um, what we see after the drawing is saved, that also saved the, um, the assembly. And so we get that icon telling us the local version of the file is newer than what exists in PDM. That's just our reminder that, hey, we've made changes. Once you're done making changes and you can edit, close, open, change, save as many times as you need to, uh, but then at the end of the day or the end of the process, when you're done, you select the file and you check it into the vault. Now I just selected the drawing and you'll see it go, it went ahead and prompted me for all the references. And uh, do I wanna go ahead and check all these in together? So um, I'll just put, put a note here, deleted the circular pattern on the cover. That will appear in our history. It'll be a good reference if we need to go back and, and undo these changes or uh, go back and reference maybe a customer who has sold this product in the older, older, uh, older edition of it, older revision. Um, so I'm gonna check everything in. It's only gonna iterate the versions, the history of the files that um, were actually changed. So that's good to know is we'll, we'll be making a new version of the drawing, the assembly and the part. And I'll go ahead and hit check in. Um, and keep in mind with this, the uh, the versions are essentially the actual files that are stored in our server. Um, the revisions are the named revisions that customers typically see. So I actually haven't pushed us through that workflow yet. Um, but I notice I'm, I've no longer got any of these files checked out. I can still go in and maybe I want to check this component and say, well, you know, do I need to make any changes there? No, that looks good. We'll close out of it. But while I'm interacting with these files when they're not checked out, SolidWorks recognizes that they're read only. We'll go ahead and close out of those. And we'll go back over to our Windows Explorer window. And we'll see um, for this assembly that we're working on, the drawing that we were working on, if I right click on that and go to the history, we'll actually see, you know, the, the time and date that 
who made those changes and uh, what they did with it. Deleted the circular pattern, there's our, our comment there. If we wanted to go back and say, well, what did it look like in revision C? We can click on revision C and click get or view and either open it in eDrawings or get that old version onto our local drive to be able to open that in SOLIDWORKS. Um, again, any of those capabilities, checking in, checking out the files, um, even reading or writing, uh, reading the files um, or being able to go in the history and getting an older version, all that's managed by your permissions. So you can really take the guesswork out of who can do what in your, in your PDM interface. Um, so that's kind of the multi-user aspect of it, is we're checking in and checking out files. We're working off of a server as far as where the master files are stored. But when we go to open a file, whether it's to preview it or open it to edit it in SOLIDWORKS, it pulls a copy local to our computer. And that's the last aspect of the first point wanted to hit on um, as far as the issues that PDM addresses, the things you've been dealing with. Because uh, I know you've been dealing with reference management. Um, once you're used to working with it, you can walk on eggshells and, and get around it, but you're still walking on eggshells. We can get rid of that, um, uh, you know, stress that, that's involved there. Um, the multi-user collaboration, we, we've got it locked down so that people are only able to do what they're supposed to be able to do. And we're not going to have conflicting copies like we often see with uh, Windows or, or local, you know, working off USB drives or working off a Dropbox. Um, and then the last part of this is the network connectivity. Um, one, when you're working off of a network drive, that continual read write to the network drive is bottlenecked by your network speed. Um, and then two, when you save a file, and, and I don't know how common this is anymore, it used to be a lot more of a problem, I think, with CAD files, but when you save a file over the network, if your network isn't reliable, you can actually end up with corrupted files. And um, that's, I think networks have improved so much that maybe that's not as much of an issue anymore. But um, the fact that uh, what, what SOLIDWORKS PDM is doing is it's pulling each of these files onto a local drive on my computer. So I can actually go to my C drive and I see SOLIDWORKS PDM is my vault name. Um, it's essentially tricking Windows to think these, these files are on my computer and they really are. Um, when you go to open a file, there's a slight delay as it copies over, but it's, but it's not really big at all. It's really about the speed of copying files from your computer to your network drive. Um, but uh, past that, now I've got the file that, uh, uh, whether it's read only or editable, I've got a copy of it on my computer that um, greatly improves the performance and reliability and takes away that bottleneck of working over a network. So that's kind of the first section of, of what PDM is and, and the benefits behind it. Um, I really wanted to adjust, uh, address the pain points. Um, what are things that SOLIDWORKS users deal with on a regular basis that PDM addresses? Um, and then we had a, a couple questions and I'm gonna kind of skim through and, and try to hit a couple of the highlights before we jump into the next section. Um, so non-CAD files can show up in the build materials. If we do like a paste as reference, you have that option to add them in the build materials or not. So that would be things like a, a, C, a CD, well, nobody uses CDs anymore, USB drive, an instruction manual, um, non-CAD files like, um, you know, the, the order number for the purchase parts that aren't modeled in SOLIDWORKS, um, thinking things like the grease or whatever that, that's included with an assembly. You could have those actually appeal, appear in the build materials was one of the questions. Um, having a dedicated server or is PDM cloud-based? Um, so PDM is a client server type application. So it runs off of a local server on your network. Um, but there are ways you can use virtual computers to, to kind of cloudify that. Um, and we actually offer hosting services for um, what I would consider, and I'm not a networking person per se, but I would consider it a cloud hosted server um, kind of like a remote desktop style uh, option. Um, so we offer hosting options for a, a pseudo cloud type application. Um, 
and then you could, if you have a Microsoft Azure or, you know, some kind of um, virtual server type application, you, you can run SOLIDWORKS PDM from that, host it on that. All right. When we, uh, to preview a, a file, um, the, the question was double click and document only previews the file, whereas checking it out only assigns it to you. Um, so if we double click the document, it opens it for view only. And it's like we saw that read only mode, kind of like a preview. Um, I would use the word preview to, to refer to um, the interface with inside the, the vault view of Windows Explorer. So when I say preview, I typically think of this as a preview. But then when we double click it, um, it previews it in the aspect that it's read only. So yes, it's open for review. You have to be able to right click and check out a file or use the menu up here to be able to edit the files. Um, PDM does not track the editing time that the files are actually open or anything. It just logs when those files are checked in and checked out. Um, and then as far as making changes when a file is checked out, only the person who has it checked out can make those changes. Um, so as we've been going through the webinar, I do want to try to focus on um, both SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard and SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional. And we'll talk about the differences a little more um, later on. But um, when, we, when we're doing all the, the file reference management, um, the bill materials, the contains, the only thing I think I've done that is only in PDM Pro was the paste as reference as, as a PDM Pro, Pro functionality. Um, and then yes, all parts are read only when they're not checked out. Um, as far as having an internet connection, uh, do you have to have an internet connection to work with files is our last question before we move on. Um, you have to have an internet connection to pull them local to your computer. But once they're local on your computer, you can actually go into a work offline mode. So what you would do is you would check out the files that you want to take home on your laptop with you. You'd get on your network. Uh, you don't have to have an internet connection to this if you're on an air gap network. Um, but you'd have to be able to connect to the server, check out the files you want to work with and go into work offline mode. And then you can actually take them home, work offline. When you reconnect, you'll go back into an online mode that you can check the files in. All right, so to continue with the, the second portion of this question, the, the further benefits that PDM presents as far as the things, uh, not the things you've been dealing with, but the things you've been doing without. Uh, so that's revision history, searching and workflow management. So um, revision history being the first thing, uh, now that we've made changes to this drawing, we want those changes to be published out, whether we, you know, this needs to be marked as revision D. If I go to the data card, you'll see it's revision D, uh, excuse me, it needs to be marked as revision E. So what we're gonna do is right click on the file and I'm going to um, put this in a new release state where we can make the changes. The changes have, uh, have been made. So what I would do from there is go in and submit it for approval if I needed somebody else to release the file, or I can do no approval required since I'm one of the high level admins here. Um, so I'm gonna just submit this right into the release state using that no approval required transition. And I'm just gonna make the comment, um, you know, that we remove the pattern and I'm gonna hit okay there. And what I'd like to do at this point, as it, um, it's gonna go ahead and mark those files as released, it will mark them as revision E. And um, in our preview, we should see on the drawing, it's marked as revision E as well. So throughout our system, that is revision E now. Um, and what I wanna do is open our PDM administration tool. So this is a little behind the scenes. Uh, I won't go too deep into this, but on the PDM admin side, you're able to set up what we call a workflow to control the lifecycle states. And these are states of the files. And so this can be for CAD files only, or it can be other files as well. Um, with PDM standard, you have a single workflow. With PDM Pro, you can actually have multiple workflows, whether it's different file types, different folders, um, and different sets of permissions to go with those. So the files are typically edited in this first state, work in process. And then they are either submitted for an approval where a member of management will release them, or if it, you know, if I have the permissions to do it, I can shoot it straight over to the release state. And when it's in the release state, it really should not be um, editable by anybody. Um, and we can control the permissions, not only based on where the, what folder those files are in, but also um, the state that the files are in themselves. 
Um, in the past, I know for revision control um, without SOLIDWORKS PDM, when we talk about revision history, some of the things you might be doing is saving a zip file or revision A before you start working on revision B. That's one way that some companies kind of lock down a, a named revision. Um, another thing you might be doing is you might have a folder structure for revision A and then you pack and go everything into revision B and work on it there. Um, have, you know, really separating the folder structure between different revisions. Um, neither of those are really good options. And SOLIDWORKS PDM really does present a great option to be able to uh, not only track and be able to refer back to the old versions of the files, but also to control the permissions of who can be able to edit and check in, check out, um, and access the files. Um, you can even set it up so that your shop floor or your marketing group that are not part of the design process, you can make it where they can only see released files. And that's a, a great option I know a lot of our customers take advantage of to be able to kind of make sure nobody's working off of um, something that's not completed yet. And then the database driven searching, I mentioned the SOLIDWORKS uh, PDM runs off of Microsoft SQL. Um, that's what maintains the references. Um, but beyond that, the SQL database is also driving our search engine. So when we search for a gearbox, it's very fast, it's quick. It's not actually interacting with the files themselves like Windows has to. Um, it's strictly reading the database and the metadata that's contained in the database. So it's a real quick snappy search um, and it's more powerful than being able to search um, just by file names. Um, so for instance, my gearbox assembly, I know I've got some of them that are named just based off of the, um, just off of the, the part numbers. So if I were to um, adjust my search engine here, if I only search by file name, I'm only gonna get a few entries, so that's five entries there. If I go in and add in the, um, the description, the other custom properties, um, not only do I get those, those five, but um, this one that only has Gearbox in the description is available there. If I wanna find the drawing real quick, I can go to where used, and there's my drawing. It's on sheet one and sheet two of that drawing. I can browse to my drawing and I see Oh, well, the drawing doesn't actually have Gearbox in the description and we weren't searching project names. So um, why don't we do that? Let's check out that drawing and let's add this description in here, Gearbox assembly. So again, we don't have to open SOLIDWORKS and go in to make those changes. I'll go ahead and check that in because I've added that custom property, added description there. And with that checked in, when I search for it now, not only will we find everything else, but that drawing that has Gearbox in its description now, that metadata is powering our search, being able to get us where we need to get really quick and not have to dig through a bunch of file structures. Um, again, think about how many minutes and hours uh, a day or a month that you spend opening Windows shared drive, navigating through file structures and folder structures, trying to figure out what the part numbers in the file names mean. Um, we can actually have our description column show up. And if we go to um, this, uh, this other example here, you'll see a lot of the files um, have the descriptions available and we can actually control what columns are shown here in our Windows Explorer interface. So that database is powering our search, is powering our references, and then it's handling all that metadata for us and really putting it wherever we want it. I can add in vendor ID or cage code or any columns that I need to from my custom properties right into my Windows Explorer interface. Um, again, we, we like SOLIDWORKS PDM to be as customizable as you want it to be. And then for that workflow communication, that's where uh, we're referring to files are in the work in process, pending state, release state, and being able to really flag your files and control them based on the part of the life cycle that they're in. Um, we had a recent implementation, PDM implementation, where um, they had a, a pretty, um, complex um, approval process that what they would do is engineering would make the changes, make the design, submit that to their marketing department, and then their marketing department would flag it as submitted to customer, waiting on the customer's approval. After it got the customer's approval, it would be stamped certified by the customer, 
and then would move into a detailing state where it could be worked on before it's released. Um, all that was done. We had the question come up, SOLIDWORKS uh, PDM Standard versus SOLIDWORKS PDM Pro. All that was done in SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard. Um, now, a lot of the automation tools are only available in Pro, and that's really where um, the bells and whistles come in. So um, hopefully here we've addressed kind of what PDM is and kind of had the grand tour. Hopefully you've seen some benefits that you can um, implement in your company with SOLIDWORKS PDM. And want to take just a few minutes to look at which version of PDM, because that is always a question that comes up. SOLIDWORKS PDM standard, SOLIDWORKS PDM professional, what's the difference? Um, you might be aware that um, we used to have a product called Enterprise PDM. And so Enterprise PDM is SOLIDWORKS PDM professional. Um, they changed the name when they introduced the, uh, the light version, PDM standard. And uh, what that was, was to give um, customers at least a base level of data management with all of their SOLIDWORKS Pro and Premium packages. And so SOLIDWORKS PDM standard is included with all, uh, every license of SOLIDWORKS Pro and Premium comes with one license of SOLIDWORKS PDM standard. So there's a few limitations like um, the num you can only have one workflow and it can only have up to 10 states. That's enough for a, a typical kind of baseline implementation. It does include a little bit of automation with uh, when you release a file, you can have it automatically create a PDF of the drawing. So there's some PDF file conversion automation available. Um, and well, PDM standard runs off of SQL Express. So there are some limitations with SQL Express when it comes to the database size for just the metadata itself. There's a 10 gigabyte database limitation. Um, that's just a Microsoft limitation with SQL Express. Um, and then also there's some limitations with like the number of cores and the amount of RAM that can use on the server. Uh, but for the most part, if you're not using PDM and you have pro and premium licenses, you need to be aware you already have the licenses for this. You're just one step away from um, being able to work in a secure vault, be able to version, revision, um, control the permissions and the workflow of your files. Um, and like I said, a majority of what we looked at so far is in both standard and PDM. I tried to kind of limit it to that. Now, what does PDM professional give you? Um, with standard or professional, there are three different license file types, whether you got standard or pro. There are CAD editor licenses that have that SOLIDWORKS add-in that you saw me use. There are contributor licenses, which are just like editors, um, but just without the SOLIDWORKS add-in. So think um, anybody that's creating or editing or interacting with files in the vault. Um, not just read-only, because the third license type is sold in a five-pack, it's a viewer license, and that's just strictly read-only licenses. Um, so your license type controls what you can do and what you can manage, um, and then your permissions are kind of overlaid on top of that within the PDM system. So SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional um, comes with the capability to do multiple workflows, so you can have separate workflows for your office documents versus your SOLIDWORKS CAD documents. You can have different workflows based on the folder structure that it's in. Um, and then with that, you can have different permissions for each of the different workflows. Like I mentioned, you know, my hiking pictures from last weekend, maybe I want, you know, to put that in a folder where everybody can see it, but not everybody needs to be able to see the, the prototype, um, you know, product that we're working on right now because we don't want them to start manufacturing it, leaking it, you know, they, they don't need access to that information. We can control that with separate workflows. Um, You've also got capabilities for additional file conversions. So this, I, I just put additional because um, it's a long list of everything from converting uh, SOLIDWORKS files to step files, um, I just parasolids, um, kind of your neutral file formats. You've also got capabilities to uh, create a DXF from the flattened view of a sheet metal part when a file gets released. Um, that's a really neat one. Um, really going all the different file conversions that we would typically associate SOLIDWORKS files with. Um, and even Office files can be converted to PDF with, uh, with SOLIDWORKS Professional, the add-in. Um, and then there's a full-fledged API available with SOLIDWORKS Professional for um, third-party tools and plugins to be able to be incorporated. One of those we'll look at uh, here in the last section. Um, and then beyond that, the, the standardized file and folder templates and serial numbers, really neat functionality within SOLIDWORKS Professional to be able to go in and you see um, I've got a nice little folder structure layout and inside projects, my projects all have nice um, layouts and names and inside this, all the subfolders and even a little notes file that comes with it. All that's powered by serial numbers and templates 
um, that, that's part of SOLIDWORKS Pro, what you can do is set up a template for a project and I can even take away privileges. I, I don't want engineers to make folders in here because then it just gets wonky. I get 30, you know, 30 or 50 or 100 folders here. Nobody can find anything. What we can do is uh, take away the ability to add folders at this level, but only give them the ability to create new projects. And so let me give my new project a name and we'll call this, uh, you know, 2020 webinar. And what it's going to do is it will um, populate a serial number for my next project number and it'll create a project named 2020 webinar with the folder and all the file structure that, that I typically like to have in it and you can even embed like templated files in it. Um, one of the things that you, you might not have noticed is that all of our files have had numbers tagged to them and so that number is actually getting generated by a serial number. The project number is getting generated by a serial number. And that's just gonna kind of take the guesswork out of, well, what's the next part number in our database? If we go in and look at the, the gearbox assembly in our CAD files here, when I pulled these in, it went ahead and tagged them with document numbers. And that's all from a serial number counter that's adding those in. And those are customizable down to, you know, if, what prefix, suffix you need on it, what type of numbering system you can even do. Don't, don't ever see anybody use it with it. You can do hexadecimal with it if you wanted to. Um, but the, being able to standardize the, the file and folder templates and use serial numbers, again, keeps things organized, keeps things controlled in that um, environment. Um, again, the key word is automation. Um, being able to do file conversions automatically or um, use API or the custom programming languages to automate ta um, repetitive tasks being able to um, automate the creation of that folder structure and the serial, using the serial numbers, taking as much as we can out of the user's hands and out of user error. Um, PDM Professional also comes with email notifications. So when a file gets submitted for approval and you're the one flagged to approve it, they can have a notification pop up with inside SOLIDWORKS PDM. And that's the database notifications that, that pop up uh, on your taskbar with PDM are in both standard and pro. But one of the things we really see people take advantage of in professional is tying that in to their SMTP email system because that's where we're used to looking for messages. And when we put those messages, something's awaited for approval or something's been edited, been sitting there edited too long, um, you've reached a deadline, those notifications can be thrown right into your email where you can't ignore them. I guess you can, but you shouldn't. Um, with professional, you also get um, further integration with add-ins for Microsoft Office for um, other popular third-party CAD systems because we recognize a lot of your customers, vendors, um, you yourself might use uh, multiple CAD systems. And so if you have other CAD systems installed on your, your computer or work with their files, it'll recognize some of their file references and, and give you an add-in. Uh, Microsoft Office has an add-in built in the interface where you can, while you have the Excel file open, check it in, edit the data card, enter some of that in, uh, data. Um, and then the Microsoft integrations for professional go one step further is you can actually use single sign-on so that it ties your PDM login to your Active Directory login um, or LDAP. So um, some great functionality there. Um, PDM professional supports multi-site replication. So if you have multiple locations that are far apart or um, have a slower network connectivity between them, you can have the files replicated at both locations or multiple locations. That way uh, there's less of a lag when uh, due to the, you know, uh, interstate or international network speed. So you have to have, um, the, the reason for that is you have to have the higher level of Microsoft SQL to enable that replication. And uh, SQL standard is the database that is actually um, supported with SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional. So SQL standard really unlocks that SQL environment for you. And um, we can uh, help you as far as the licenses and getting that sorted out as well um, for those SQL standard licenses you would need to kind of go alongside SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional. Um, but it unlocks like the database, the RAM, the, the number of cores, a lot of those limitations opens that up. And then it also has some great tools inside the data management uh, the database management tools for um, doing maintenance plans and having those database backups happen automatically, things like that. There's a lot more with SolidWorks PDM Professional um, and, and you can go to our website and check out, you know, like the full detailed videos and lists. 
but I just wanted to highlight a few of those like big benefits that, that help you make that decision. Is Solar PDM standard? Uh, first of all, do we already have it and we need to just get it implemented? Um, we provide that as a service for everything from installation to training um, for your admins and your users. We don't want e either of these systems, PDM standard or professional, to be a system that you have to come to us to edit. They are living systems that really you, we want to train you to be able to manage them in house. Um, but uh, whether it's PDM standard or PDM professional, um, you can have a, a team of admins or really just a team of engineers be able to manage that in house for you. Um, now we offer not just the installation services, um, but I mentioned the hosting services where we can actually host your server for you on one of our cloud servers. Um, and then there's an in-between option that we also offer um, to manage the server for you. So we would essentially assign an engineer to serve as your CAD uh, PDM admin, excuse me, not for your you know, CAD files and design, but for your, as your PDM admin, if a new user need to be added, workflow changes need to be made, we could actually set it up to offer that service to be able to make those changes and manage that for you. Um, so which version of PDM is right for you? Do you already have PDM standard licenses you're not using? Do you need to upgrade to Pro or, or buy the PDM standard licenses to just get the, get the taste of what the PDM experience is? Or do you see something right there in SOLIDWORKS PDM Pro that, yes, that's gonna easily um, justify the ROI as far as the time saved and being able to automate those tasks and use that PDM professional environment, whether it's replication. A lot of times it's, it's one or two of those things that are clutch for your company to have that get you into that PDM Pro uh, environment where, where it's really unlocked. You can do all the, the um, tools and features in it. Um, and then beyond SOLIDWORKS PDM, I wanted to show real quickly, and, and we'll wrap up here shortly, um, a, a look at our, our product called Flatter Files. So, um, so Flatter Files is a plugin for SOLIDWORKS PDM that is a, 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 a gives you the ability to share your key documents in a secure, controlled fashion through the supply chain, whether it's to vendors, customers, or in, internally within your company, um, to people that aren't in the PDM environment. It's a uh, cloud-based platform, so we'll log into it here in just a second through our browser, but um, you can send somebody a link and it's a password protected link that they can access that file. They'll always be able to get the latest version of that file. Um, the, or if they're, you know, if they have permissions to be able to do that, if they're authorized for that. Um, everything's searchable based on the metadata, the, the custom properties, the, the file names, um, and they're automatically updated with the latest revisions. And then it has apps. We have apps, uh, not just logging in through a website browser on the PC, but also logging in through iPhone iPad, Android devices, somebody that's not using SOLIDWORKS or not at the time, you know, not currently open with SOLIDWORKS can be able to go in and, and view these PDFs, view the, the um, 3D versions of the step files. And uh, Flatter Files gives us a way we can automate, kind of behind the scenes, automate everything to the cloud that needs to be available uh, as far as the release documents that need to be available throughout the supply chain. So I'm gonna jump over into my web browser here. So Flatter Files, it does have a, um, a single sign-on capabilities so that um, it's, for us, it's actually tied into our Microsoft accounts. And we'll look here, we've got the gearbox and it's already showing that released version E. So revision E, uh, I had this kind of just running in the background and it's already, made a PDF of that drawing, and it's made a step file of the assembly to, for us to be able to interface here on the cloud level. Um, so this is from a user perspective. I can go in and kind of like looking through a pile of printed drawings on my desk, be able to uh, come in and just scroll through these to find the drawing that I'm wanting to, to interact with. And once I find the drawing that I'm interested in, I can uh, double click on it, it highlights here, so it shows me the description, revision date, um, the revision that it's currently at. I can get um, access to, this is essentially a PDF of the drawing, but you can do um, the, the 3D view mode where it renders a 3D view of the step file or the STL file. 
Um, again, no software needed to be installed. This can be on a, on a home laptop where I'm just logging in to check something, you know, an afterthought. And within the, the viewer, both of the, um, we have access to the 3D, but then also if we go to our Gearbox assembly here, we can go in and add annotations. So I see the changes I've made are available here. Uh, it's got the new name there. And if I highlight the differences, it'll actually kind of give me some indicators of what changed between the different versions. And so as I kind of hop into the versions we had created there, notice the revisions highlighted. Um, maybe a, a better example here is uh, I've got some changes on uh, this component here. So it's a, it's a part drawing, so there's a little more dimensions and everything. But you'll notice as we look through the different revisions, if we highlight the changes, it'll actually detect which dimensions have changed, the, the name was added, revision was added in um, between the different versions. You can do annotations in this view. So not only the highlights, but also um, we can go into an annotations mode and create annotations before we send it out to a supplier for the different aspects that they need to check or put some notes onto it. I'm just going to cancel out of that. Um, but it gets really cool when we want to share this outside of our, our company or outside of our department. That gearbox that we made some changes to, I'm going to right click on it and share it. I'm going to create a share to my, um, I've got just kind of a, a dummy email set up that's outside of my company and we'll add a password onto it. Um, and it's going to shoot an email to the recipients that says, hey, you've been shared this link. So instead of giving a, um, you know, an attachment with the files in it, we can't really send these files outside of our company. Um, we don't want them to have the out of date files. Let's put an expiration date on it for tomorrow. I don't want to notify about changes. You, that's certainly a great option, right? And then do I want to give them access to the PDF or the 3D view as well? Uh, we can even include step files or the actual CAD documents with it if we wanted to uh, have those available for the person we're sharing them with. So when I go to share that, it's going to preview a little email that's going to get sent out to our, our user. Um, so I'm, we'll go ahead and send that. I went ahead and copied the address though so I can kind of shortcut it. And when I go to that um, copied address, I'm going to get that prompt. So this is my guest user here and that password that we shared with them. We have them log in with that and they are only able to see the files that we've authorized them to see, that we've given them permission to, to see. Um, we can control what revisions they see. Um, they can even make annotations and send those back to the company. You know, so like, you know, we see what you did here and we don't like it. We need at least three of these connectors. I don't know, but uh, they can save those changes back it gives you a way to communicate back and forth without having to take a bunch of screenshots. Um, they can go in to view the, the 3D version. If they have permission, they can print the file. We have full control over that. And then what type of file they want to download. If they want to download, right now there's only the PDFs available, um, but we could have uploaded and, and give them permission to see the step files, the STL files, if we only want them to be able to get that um, for like somebody that's 3D printing a part for us. Um, or even the actual CAD files themselves. If this is a, a high level partner that we need to be able to share the CAD files with them, that's available here with Flatter files. So the, the goal behind Flatter files is to give you an interface, an opportunity to be able to share the files outside of the PDM environment with as least resistance as possible. And um, the, the big idea behind this is um, you, we, we wanna control how um, these, these guest users are able to see the files. We want to control when they're able to see those files if we need those to expire. We control which revision they're able to see. If there's a new revision, um, they'll, they'll get an email reminder that says, hey, this has been increased to revision F. You might want to review the changes. Getting that out to our supply chain is invaluable. Um, and the, the great thing about Flatter files it's, uh, it's licensed based on the number of editors, not on the number of viewers. So you're, you're not limited. There's an unlimited number of viewers. It doesn't tie up a license for them to access that. So you don't have to set up an account or a license for every one of your customers or, or even within your company, being able to share that outside PDM to your other departments for them to have read access to those PDFs, step files, 3D files, 
um, what have you, that they need access to. So Flatter Files is another way that, that we think is, is a great way we set ourselves apart, being able to offer a product like this to work alongside you in PDM. And so um, that's what Flatter Files brings to that SOLIDWORKS PDM experience, a, a, a method for you to share those key documents outside of the PDM environment. So hopefully today, um, been able to give you a pretty good walkthrough, a pretty good tour of what SOLIDWORKS PDM brings to the table, what version of PDM you might want to be looking at and start with. Again, if you, if you start with SOLIDWORKS PDM standard, uh, I don't guess I mentioned this, but I, but I will, um, PDM standard is fully upgradable to PDM professional. So if you're already working with PDM standard and you're afraid to have to restart your implementation, um, fear not that, that you just upgrade your, um, your licenses to PDM professional and upgrade your, your SQL can, can be streamlined and upgrade from express to standard. Um, we're very familiar with that process. It's not a big issue at all. Um, and then the licenses are just like SOLIDWORKS floating licenses that they're shared on a server. And typically with SOLIDWORKS PDM, we recommend one license per user because um, it's not just when you have SOLIDWORKS open like SOLIDWORKS is for those li floating licenses, but um, it's anytime you're logged into the PDM system. And so even though I'm not doing anything in PDM, I'm technically logged into PDM right now. And so I'm still tying up that license. I believe there's like an idle time with it, but just to uh, you know keep things easy and ease of access, you really want one license per user, whether that's a PDM CAD editor licenses that uses SOLIDWORKS, a PDM contributor license that would be somebody who doesn't use SOLIDWORKS or CAD, but interacts with the files and needs, needs those privileges, or that third license type is a viewer type license of sold in five packs um, that just read only licenses for like your shop floor or outside of the design department. So I wanna answer, uh, few other of these questions. And so if you've got any questions, you can feel free to add them in chat or add them into the, the Q&A. But um, other than that, hopefully we've been able to give you a good look at what SOLIDWORKS PDM can bring to the table for you, managing your CAD files and managing that workflow for you. Um, it, I'm, I'm gonna take some time to, to do some Q&A and answer these questions, but otherwise, uh, thank you for joining us and uh, you have a good rest of the day. So the first question um, that I've got here is, um, if somebody updates a part in an assembly you have checked out, can you get that and continue working on it in your assembly? Um, yes, you can. So if I'm working on the assembly, maybe some of the components or not, but if I've got the assembly checked out and I'm working on it, somebody has one of the components checked out and they make changes and check those changes in, PDM's gonna flag me there with a little highlighting I'll be able to get the latest version and not lose my changes midstream. I think that was what the question was out was like, would we lose the changes? Um, does the revision process add a comment to the rev block? Um, that is a capability that SOLIDWORKS has recently added in um, for revision tables to be managed by SOLIDWORKS PDM. Um, so yes, um, a couple different ways to approach that, whether you have a revision table that's linked to PDM or if you just want the a comment to be added in a note on your drawing for the, the most recent revision, um, that can be done as well. Just using your custom properties. There's a bi-directional communication again between your custom properties and your metadata with SOLIDWORKS PDM. Um, the release date of the newly released REV-E. So the release date would be when the file was released, not when it was last modified. You'd actually be able to see both. With the last modified date that's baked onto the file and you'd be able to see when the file was most recently released. It, what we typically do is we have it, have the workflow stamp the release date or the approval date um, or the submission date. Really anything um, can be date stamped into the custom properties uh, when the file gets released. And then being able to change the data card. Um, what I did uh, making a change to the data card, changing the description, was um, something that I did have to check out the drawing. I didn't have to open it in SOLIDWORKS, but I checked out the drawing and made a change on the data card. You can also set up those fields, like if you had an unimportant field like notes or something like that, that you didn't really need to track, you can unlock those so they don't require a checkout. What that means is somebody that doesn't have permission to check out the file and edit it could go into those fields that are what we call uh, version free variables and add some notes in or, or make some make some changes um, if they're unlocked like that. 
And then um, as far as PDM interfacing with simulations or motion studies, um, PDM can handle any files in, that, that are in Windows. So you can have uh, JPEGs and, and TXT files, CNC files, um, and then yes, your simulation files, your motion studies are part of that, whether their motion studies are typically stored in the SOLIDWORKS file themselves. Um, and then simulations are, you know, often uh, typically have those external files that go along with it. All that can be managed inside the PDM interface. Um, PDM doesn't care what a file is unless it's, you know, something special like a CAD file that it needs to read the references for. So any file type can be managed in PDM. And then purchasing the seats of pro uh, versus standard, um, PDM and, and the, uh, the account manager in your region will definitely correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm 99% certain PDM standard licenses are available. Uh, so if, for instance, you have four floating CAD seats that you float between eight people, two of which barely ever use SOLIDWORKS, but they're gonna use PDM a lot, you might wanna have those four seats of SOLIDWORKS Professional that come with PDM standard, and then add four more seats of PDM standard with that. So you can, 99% sure you can definitely do that. Um, and then a couple questions in the chat box here. Uh, PDM working with an ECO process. Um, yes, so PDM Professional, because it is it, able to handle multiple workflows. It, typically we see uh, if, if somebody wants to manage ECOs inside PDM, they use PDM Professional and dedicate a workflow to ECO files. And it'll, it'll specifically filter out files that are ECO-.XLSX or whatever file type you use for that. Um, the benefit of having that in your PDM system is you can attach that ECO as a reference onto your assembly or your drawing, or vice versa. You could attach the drawing as a reference to the ECO. So they travel through the workflow together. And then what we see with ECOs is they typically don't follow the regular workflow. They just have a beginning, ended, or canceled kind of states. Um, but yes, you can definitely manage ECOs within SOLIDWORKS PDM or um, with PDM Pro, you also have like import export capabilities to automate communication between an ERP system and SOLIDWORKS PDM. So if you already have something for your ESO process in your ERP system, um, that can be communicated back and forth with uh, the metadata in SOLIDWORKS PDM uh, professional. And then the last question I have um, here is using a book for a reference for PDM that's not a tutorial that describes how to use it. Um, we have training uh, classes and training manuals for both the user side of PDM as well as the administrative side. Um, on top of that, great resources to use are our knowledge base, kb.goengineer.com, for everything from SOLIDWORKS to PDM to 3D printers to, um, we, we post blog posts, support articles, and in all of our YouTube videos into that, kb.goengineer.com. Um, so you can go there to search for additional resources and then help.solidworks.com is kind of your main SOLIDWORKS help documentation for both SOLIDWORKS and PDM. There's a section devoted to PDM there that's very comprehensive. So if you were wanting to, to know something about data card variables, you could search for data card variables there and find a, a wealth of information, very comprehensive um, system of information there. All right, if y'all will hang around for another minute or two and uh, check if y'all have any other questions. But uh, again, I wanna thank y'all for joining us today. And I hope, uh, hope you saw something that was useful for you, whether you're already using PDM and can uh, step up your game and use some more of the features, take advantage of that. Or um, if this is the first time you've seen PDM, hopefully it was a good uh, overview process.